Uh, welcome back to the 150K podcast, where we help you take your dreams to six figures and beyond. Um, it's an honor for me today. I actually am bringing you one of my, my guests today, Andrew Sales, who I actually reached out to for help when I was doing door-to-door -door sales. I think it was five years ago. Um, and this isn't just like one of those, he did it years ago. He actually runs teams, has his own business. Um, great story, but like I literally reached out to him because this guy was out on the street videoing closing people down. And as salespeople, um, you know, you want to deal with people that actually are in the game as we talk about. You know, the gurus that are out there right now that did it 20, 30 years ago, they have some good points. But when you're doing sales all the time or training people with sales, uh, that's just an amazing thing. So, Andrew, welcome to the show. And uh, if you could give our audience a little bit of your background and all, that would be amazing. Hey, Joe, thanks for having me. Uh, you're the man. I, we go back. It's been awesome to uh, to kind of grow together, right? And, mm -hmm. and be friends online these last few years. And like you said, as a salesperson, you want other people in your circle that are doing it. And uh, I learned a lot from you, man. You know, I, I pay Appreciate attention that. to what, what you're doing. So it, it's mutual back and forth. And uh, that's what's important, I think, about having such a good crew or around you or, you know, a circle that see you become um, and, and, you know, look at my life that that's, that's been, uh, part of my track record, right. I, I've, I've always surrounded myself with other people. You know, I, I was a screw up growing up, you know, I, I sold drugs from 15 to 20. And when I sold drugs, I was around the street hustlers, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the biggest street hustlers in the game. And, uh, that's what I did. So when I was 20, I got caught, these cops beat my ass, took my drugs and, and they let me go. So I thought I got robbed by some crooked cops. Well, fast forward two years later, I'm walking through a park. I'm not even selling drugs anymore. I'm actually playing poker full time at this point in time, believe it or not. Nice. And yeah, it was fun. It was a fun <laughs> couple of years. And yeah. uh, they, uh, but yeah, I get stopped by a cop and it turns out I have a warrant with a $20,000 bond. Oh no. So yeah, I, I had some poker money saved up. I bonded out. I got a lawyer. My lawyer is like, I can get you off by the time you go to court but you're gonna to wanna to have a job. So there was this guy I knew from the poker tables named Chad. I, I knew he made good money because he lost a lot of money, but, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know what he did exactly. So I call him up and I'm like, Chad, can you get me a job? And he's like, yeah, man, I got you. So I found out later, he called his manager in St. Louis and he's like, I got this kid, Andrew. He's kind of ghetto. He's probably not going to work out, but he's my friend. So we're going to give him a shot. You know, like I'm kind of dressed down today, but normally I wear suits. I've, I've come a long way since then. But back then, you know, I'd wear a, uh, a baggy jersey, sag on my pants, hat cocked to the side, red mm -hmm. rag hanging out on my yep, body. Yep. You know, now I'm kind of sharp. But um, anyways, I go in this meeting. And uh, like I said, I didn't know what he did, but they didn't have an office or anything. And I got a big, beautiful office now. I overlook Bush Stadium and the Arch. But, you know, these guys are operating out of a Starbucks. And I'm mm -hmm. like, what? And then I find out they're selling cable door to door. And I'm like, what the fuck? And like, I'm about <laughs> to leave. <laughs> and so, uh, but then these guys start busting out $1,000 paychecks, like yep. one right after another for one week. And back then, that was all the money in the world to me, or, you know, at least mm -hmm. legally. And um, so I was like, well, I don't know anything about sales, but I know I'm better than those guys. So yep, like, yep. I just came out and I, I busted ass, man. I, I didn't have a car in those days. I got dropped off at noon, picked up at nine. These guys would take hour long lunch breaks, hour long smoke breaks. I, I'd take a, a 15 minute lunch break on the curb and just get back to knocking. And mm -hmm. it took me a while. Yeah. You know, well, that, I, I that's crazy that you mentioned that because I did phone sales for a long time, selling over the phone. And then I wanted to get into a cable company um, and I ended up doing door to door cable sales and finding you. So it's funny that your first. So that was your first taste of door to door was. cable sales. That's yeah. hilarious. Or direct to you, whatever you sell. That's wild. Yeah, well, it, This is how long ago it was. And it's kind of funny, but um, uh, DNT phone line, uh, like house phone. 1.5 meg DSL internet <laughs> <laughs> and oh, then like no. satellite TV. It was, it yes. was, I can't believe we sold that shit. But <laughs> That's crazy. So you start doing sales, doing door to door. And like you said, it sounded like you, you knew you were better than the guys that you were working with, but 
I mean, did you just start out taking like the skills she had done from selling the drugs and stuff before and just apply that? Or how did you get good doing door to door right from the go? So, man, that, that's a great question. And, um, you know, I, I, I realized right away that the principles that made me successful selling drugs apply to door to door. Right. Yep. So like part of it for me was uh, out hustle everybody when I sold drugs, like how I came up with the dope game, you know, as stupid as it sounds like. I was broke when I first started, mm -hmm. but if you needed at least $20 worth of whatever drug you're buying, mostly as weed when I first started selling out, but I did graduate the harder stuff to sell. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, as long as you had 20 bucks, you could wake me up. And like that, that just, uh, that, that, that was just what that hustle was what set me apart from the competition. And like, I continued that hustle, you know, like if I saw somebody buying cigars at the store, you know they're buying that for weed so like i'd be like hey you need some weed i got the best i'll give you a deal and uh you know i just out hustle people like that and you know i was always on my game this and that and then i, I figured out that hey these these upper level people they, they watch somebody like me so i i started figuring out ways to connect with those upper, upper level people and get my sell better deals and same way i i scaled in, in door to door and other sales jobs I, I would watch for people that, you know, the guy that came to me five, six times a day with a couple of his friends and, and bought bag after bag after bag. I was like, hey man, how about I front you a quarter pound mm -hmm. and you bring me back 250 bucks and, you know, you're going to smoke for free and you're going to make money off these people. And so I, I would kind of, you know, duplicate myself and disappear is what, what yep. we call it in my, in my company. And uh, so I, I realized right away that those same principles would make me successful. And I just applied them in a, in a legit business form. Gotcha. Gotcha. And for people that have, maybe they're just getting into sales because a lot of people listening to this either are in their sales career or maybe are just starting out and all, uh, but for the door to door people, because we're talking about that at this point, how did you approach, like, did you, you did you have like, when I first started doing, I had a little bit of fear of, okay, what are they going to say? Or what are they going to do? How did you break the ice per se, when you would go to the door? What was some techniques maybe you used? Man. So, uh, I got over that fear right away just because I, I wanted to make money, man. So mm -hmm. like for me, the the ice break breaking techniques kind of kind of vary on, on the product, right? Like some products, it's just like or for me, at least like I, I'm straight to the point. I'm straight to business, but I, yep. I do things that are, are designed to drop your guard. So um, my icebreakers are making it feel like I'm supposed to be there and this mm -hmm. is something you need to do. And, and I guess that's how I would say I, I break the ice. Um, I know some guys walk up and crack jokes and this and that, not really my style, you know, I, maybe I'm a funny guy, but just like to kind of like be funny on the spot is my style. Like I'm just more like deliver value straight to the point and make it feel like it's something you have to do. You need to do and I'm supposed to be there. Which is crazy because I'm that way on the phone. So when I do phone sales, I am Mr. Business. I'm going to solve your problem, fix all your stuff. When I did door to door, I literally would go up and I'm in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So if they were a Cowboys fan, even though I'm not, and everyone that knows yeah. me knows I'm not, I'm like, oh, you like the Cowboys? I would just start talking to them and then be like, oh, by the way, we do this. It was kind of, it's kind of funny on the phone. Yeah. I'm like you pop, pop, pop on with the door to door. I don't know. It's just one of those. I guess I had to break the ice because I think this is what it is. Do you like doing sales over the phone better or face to face? I think I know the answer, but I prefer face to face personally. Yeah, and I love over the phone. I don't know but why I, that is, but I just I love that over the phone sale. So you know what I I I, I will say too that I I thoroughly like I guess versus face to face, but what might surprise you is my number two is either through Facebook Messenger or our text messages. I, I've closed some big deals through Facebook Messenger and text message. And uh, I'm totally comfortable selling there because I know other people are comfortable, you know, doing business there. So mm -hmm. like, uh, that's my number two. And then number three would actually be the phone for me, ironically enough. And like, yeah. I, I enjoy working the phones too. And I, I like phones and, um, and Facebook Messenger because it's easy volume. I can get up and, and send 200 Facebook messages, yep. you know, at 6 a.m. easily and, and, and get started before anybody else is even awake. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why I like the phone because I make calls and I do email marketing and that type of stuff. So I'm able to just reach out and hit so many different people. Um, so what are some of the, well, let's ask, I'm going to ask you a funny thing first and we'll get back to the practical because I know we talked about this before. 
with your business doing door to door all the time. And as, I mean, as what you can talk about, what has been some of the craziest houses you've gone up to? Like I've had old <laughs> dudes come out in their underwear. I've had Man. couples fighting, but I know you've had some probably pretty crazy, cool stories. Man, I, I do. I mean, like how, how X-rated can we get? <laughs> well, this is on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, so we got to at least keep it to where we can be on the, the podcast. <laughs> uh, I, I, I got a ton of crazy stories. And, um, you know, what, what really funny one actually is uh, I was training this new guy, right? And we're in East St. Louis. And if you don't know about East St. Louis, it's like the most hood spot in the country. And so I knocked this lady's door. You know, normally like we're door to door guys. We go seven or eight nose deep. It is what it is. But like if I'm training somebody, I might go 12 deep just to prove a point that yep. like I don't give up. And so like I'll take this lady like super, super deep. And then like <laughs> she's getting mad. And like I think it's funny just because me that to me that stuff yep. is funny. Yep. And like, as we're leaving, I'm like, all right, well, I'll see you tomorrow. And she's like, you better not come back tomorrow. And I was like, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> and we were like, probably like seven or eight steps, like away from her porch, like in the street. And I was, and I was like, all right, I'll see you tomorrow. And, and she's like, you better not come back. And I was like, okay, tomorrow. And she goes to her house, grabs a gun and is like, you ain't coming back tomorrow. And pops a shot in the air. Oh, no. And I'm like, ma'am. <laughs> I was just playing. Like, I'm not even going to be in this neighborhood tomorrow. Yeah. And, and so then when we leave, the new guy is like, does that kind of shit happen all the time? And I was like, <laughs> fuck no, man. That's just never happened to me before. That was crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. I've had a few people. It's actually when I did door or window sales for a Home Depot a while back. A guy's like, well, either you can go or I can go get my gun. Never had him totally pull it out, but. Yeah, that some people are just weird and crazy. So when you're training a new person, and, and I, I'm just trying to stand this door-to-door -door thing for a little bit, for sure. how do you train them to do like overcoming objections? Uh, like what, what are some techniques, some little diamonds we can drop for people? So that's a, that's a really good question. And, and to be honest, at, at this point in my career, like I was even sitting in my office today, like I love knocking doors, but uh, I'm, I'm so busy with running, like I run two training classes a day. I run interviews and we have a call center here, a bunch of other stuff. I don't want to bore you guys, but um, yeah, I, I, I love training people to overcome objections. So um, with new reps, I, I actually break down training over, over two days. And I, and I start with the first part of just like the initial pitch that like kind of places you in a position to get the sale. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey, you, you got to learn this. And, you know, in our industry, what we do, just learning that can make you three to 500 a day, which is, you know, enough to, enough to hold you over. Now, once you, you get smooth with it, you learn to, you know, overcome objections, you can make seven, eight, a thousand a day. Um, but after that, I, I actually introduce one, one objection a day. And I say, hey, like, you need to master this objection because mastering it gets you one more sale a day. So, um, I introduce one objection at a time. I, I make sure they master that over that day. And then over the way I, I design our rebuttals for the objection is to uh, disrupt their thought pattern or mm -hmm. even more specifically, you know, approach that, that question that their inner monologue, that voice in their head is asking in their mind, but they're not saying it out loud. So that's what I really drive home to our, our brand new reps when they're like, well, you know, how do I get around this? Well, usually that we, we respond with a question to put the ball back into their court. And it's generally a question that we know exactly how they're going to answer. Mm -hmm. And then we take control again, move them down the path closer to the sale oh, by overcoming that objection. And then we, we go back in for the close. And, and for us, you know, let's go grab your bill and, you know, I'll wait right here where you grab it, or, you know, I'm going to kick this over to financing if we're, we're doing rooftop solar. Mm -hmm. But uh, for, for new reps, that, that's my, my general overall strategy is like, A, I, I introduce one at a time, you know, not to overwhelm them. And I really drive home that like, yeah, this learning to overcome this objection, you know, A1 is, is going to get you, you know, this amount of extra sales, whether it's, it's door to door and it's like one a day or it's rooftop solar and this you know, one every other week, one a month still. Um, you got to really learn this, hone it in, 
we'll spend the time working on it. And then the, the process for overcoming that objection is 99 of 100 times as we're responding with a question that we know they're gonna, what they're gonna answer to. Mm-hmm. We solve that, that answer and then we just go back in for the close. Yeah, yeah, you're reframing it to get them into a position to where you're able to close them and move them to where you want them to be, showing exactly. them their pain points so that you can help them. Yeah, no, yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So, like, just, uh, you know, so, like, is it okay if we talk about this a little longer? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. So, like, what one thing, like, I, it was just fresh in my mind because, you know, in door-to-door sales, you know, I, I don't care if you're giving something away. So like, I, I have a project now to where we give away a free 20% discount on your electricity. Like all, mm-hmm. all you got to do is just sign up for the shit and, you know, put yep, a payment yep. info on file. And, uh, and so people still say not interested. It's the most common thing you hear. So like what I've trained my reps to say is when somebody says not interested, they respond with, how do you mean? And if you think about it, that, that phrase, how do you mean, isn't something that that somebody really ever says so like when you when you say that to somebody it it totally disarms them and it throws off that inner monologue that's like i'm telling this guy no i'm telling this guy no i don't care how good it sounds i'm telling this guy no (laughs) when you're like how do you mean they're like how do you mean what this guy just say to me like did i just did did that when you said it when you said it (laughs) wait what is he how do you mean people don't talk that way that's good that's yeah. good, man. <laughs> and so like it totally throws it off and then they come back and they're like um I, I i mean i'm i'm not interested and then we're like oh no there's nothing to be interested in you're, you're already paying for this just grab your bill real quick i'll show you i'll wait right here where you grab it mm-hmm. and just throwing that that word phrase out there that nobody really uses and it sounds kind of weird but when you think about it you know what they're saying but you're your voice in your head is like, no, I'm saying no, I'm saying no. It's shut up to figure out how to how to answer that question. Mm-hmm. And and it just totally disarms people. It's great. You know, I, I hope some of you guys watching this go out and use it because like you'll see it in real time, like in their head, they don't know what to say. And they're <laughs> like, um, I'm I'm not interested. I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. So with your guys with the door to door and all because you have multiple businesses, it sounds like you have more of a process that you have them go like, um, oh, shoot, the straight line system he did kind of that way to where you yeah. follow it down the system. And um, yeah. like with door to door and all is that is that kind of how you train? I know you have, you know, Andrew sales spin on it. But is that yeah. kind, of, kind of what you do? So I, I do love the straight line system. You know, I've, I've gone through everybody's sales training for the most part. I, I've worked for sales trainers before. Um, I truly believe for door to door, the straight line system with the Andrew sales spin is, is probably the best that, that there is. Um, but that being said, I, 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 I do, I do change some stuff up. Like um, for our simple sales, you know, like our, our, our project's called Community Solar. We give away a free a free discount on your electricity bill every month, like 20%. Um, it's so simple that you don't got to like make it complex to where I have a, a six line pitch essentially that's designed to pretty much get you the sale. And you know mm-hmm. those six lines, you know, the objections will get the sale. For um, for rooftop solar, you know, it's, it's, it is similar to the straight line but there's more freedom to move. Your, your yep. boundaries are bigger, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you've ever done straight line um, selling, you know that there's the line and then there's the boundaries on it. And if you keep the sale within those boundaries, like if you're, you're talking about yep. the fish on the wall, you're, 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 you're way out here out of the boundary. But if you're, you're, you're revolved in the sale, as long as you stay in those boundaries and work them back to the line and keep moving, you're golden. With uh, a lot of door to door, I feel like your boundaries are right here, right? Mm-hmm. But as you get into like more complex sales, rooftop solar, roofs, um, maybe even alarms, hailstorms, stuff like that, those boundaries get a little bit bigger where you can kind of play in between and, and work your way back. But what I teach with door to door is, yeah, straight line persuasion, minimal boundaries. You know, the pitch is designed entirely to disarm that, that inner monologue mm-hmm. and get you to answer the questions that I need to hear. And then I already know how to, how to respond to those questions to get you to do what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Because sales is simple. We just complicate it. I mean, we're finding a solution. We're solving that problem for them with the solution that we have. And we're asking for them to buy. It's really simple. We just try to make it too hard and complicated and crazy, which I did for years. So have you ever heard of the buying chart? No. Tell me about the buying chart. 
So one thing I, I teach is the buying chart, right? And so it's like a, a, a line chart almost that like there's a line going down and a line going across at a right angle. And so this line going across the bottom is time and this line going up is emotion. And mm -hmm. there's a dotted line and where time meets emotion is called the buying line. And so like every sale starts with time, right? You got to put the time in, like time outside of fucking where you're working. Yep, you yep. you, you got to go home like, you got to talk about what you're doing. Like all my friends, they know every campaign I have. They know to pitch for it because they hear me talk about it. They're on the phone and they hate hearing it. But I make <laughs> at least five times as much money as any of them. Yep. So I'll talk about whatever the fuck I want, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, so like that's that's where the rule of time comes in. I, you know, and obviously you got to put your time in, you know, in the field and this and that. that that's where people lack uh, hardcore. But even if you're putting your time in the field and you're not putting your time in out of the field, you're going to have a lot harder time get into that buyer in line and then emotion, right? Mm -hmm. That line up is emotion. Now, the best way to leverage emotion or, or build rapport, make somebody like know and trust you is yep. to answer questions. You know, how I teach it is if, if you were going on a date and let's imagine your your goal for this date is to seal the deal and keeping a PG. Like yeah, yeah, I got you. I understand. I use this analogy. I hear you. Keep going. Yeah, kiss on the cheek, <laughs> right? Yep, yep. And you, you want to seal that deal with the kiss on the cheek. So you got to put your time on the date, you know, looking good, feeling good, this and that. And, and then when you're on the date, if you ask the right questions, you can lead somebody down a path to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And you can slowly build rapport with them. And, you know, you don't have to tell people anything about yourself. People like to talk about themselves. And if yes. you ask those right questions, they'll be like, man, I really like that guy. You know, I don't know why, but I like him. Mm -hmm. And if you, you do the right things and, you know, when time meets motion of that buying line, you ask the right question, you're going to steal the deal. But the thing is, there, we all know that douchey guy on the date that starts talking about how much money he makes, how, yeah. how hot his ex-girlfriend was, how expensive yeah. his watch was. And uh, he overshoots the buying line, what mm -hmm. I call it, to where if he would have kept it simple, stuck to the script and just shut up. And when he mm -hmm. got to the buying line, he could have got it. And and, and that, that's one thing that I really teach is like, hey, like we don't have to overcomplicate this. Right. Like I teach you all you need to know to make the sale. If you start learning all this other stuff and when you start learning all this other stuff it's gonna mess you up i have 19 year old kids that come in and make three grand within their first two weeks so they don't know anything and they mm -hmm. do exactly what i tell them but then like week four or five they're like well i say it like this and i like to do this and then they drop till they're making like seven eight hundred bucks a week and then they and come back and they're like man why didn't i listen to you yep yeah and it's like well you know what it, it if what you knew, to, if what you thought was the best idea worked, you'd probably be a millionaire already, right? Yep. So, like, <laughs> um, so that's why I say, hey, stick to the script. It works, man. Mm -hmm. You know, don't overcomplicate things. Like, find somebody that's doing something good, that's making a lot of money, doing what you want to do, and just copy it, man. There's no need to mm -hmm. reinvent the wheel. And we overcomplicate things. Like, there's a process. There, regardless of what you're selling, mm -hmm. you know, I always go. I was to lose everything and have to start over and I was going to interview for a job. My first question, like, obviously I'd be like, what's the product? I'd have to feel like this is legit something that I can sell. Yep. Yep. And, um, but then I, my second question would be like, what's the top guy making? Yes. Like I've done guys, that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're working someplace, a hundred, a hundred percent commission, maybe there's a third question I'm not thinking of right now, but like one of your first three questions should be like, what is the top guy making? Mm -hmm. And, if it's a re if it's something that you feel is is in your your zone that you want to make, find that person and do exactly what they do, mm -hmm. and 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 that's all you got to do. Like there's no need to, to overcomplicate things. Like most of the stuff I teach and I train on is stuff that I've heard other people say, and I just repackage myself to what for, for what we do because mm -hmm. it works. Why 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 come up with anything different? What out there works? Right. But yeah, and like I was listening to a podcast of a friend of mine named George Bryant, and he says success is simple. It's doing the boring stuff each and every day that works, getting yeah. the base hit each and every day. Because you know this, you've been in there. We have big deal people and we make jokes, you know, maybe big deal Bob or whatever. They always want this big, big deal and they're going to do it in seven, eight months. They maybe get one or not. But really, it's the base hits. It's doing the right things every day. Following up, prospecting, presenting, asking for so just doing simple little things every day. You'll be successful at sales finding that guy. Mm -hmm. I did that in oil and gas. I found the best person that was at it 
oil and gas. Man, yeah, that's tough. yeah, that was a rough one. That was a rough one over the phone. So that's Wolf of Wall Street in your face. But I found this guy and he was really good at it. And I said, look, man, I'll split the deal with you. I'll take 2%, 3%. I'll set you up. You train me. Sometimes you got to eat a little bit of crow. Mm-hmm. But now I'm a two-time president club winner because yeah. I put the work in, you know. And that leads to my next question mindset and daily habits. Do you think that, I, and I think I know your answer to this. So the first question for you, and you're getting different questions than anyone else. Do you think that salesmen are natural born or can they be trained? I think it's both. Um, I think some people are, are just naturals to where like they're good at reading people. They, they're charismatic. They know the things to say. Mm-hmm. And I think other people... <clears throat> they uh they put the effort in and they learn those things and um you know i i don't think either one is necessarily better than the other because mm-hmm. if if the naturals man they they have a they like i don't know when you're naturally good at something you start relying on natural ability we see it with kids if you're yeah. if the kid that's great at football when he's like six and relies on nothing but natural ability and never hits the weight room and never practices mm-hmm. outside he, he's great till high school then he gets to college and plays D one and everybody's good. Yep. When, when you get in a sales room, like you get in one of my, one of my conference rooms, everybody's good. You know, like we, we call what I, our, our first 30 days, we call millionaire boot camp because either we will, we will break you in those first 30 days and you're yep. going to be like, this isn't for me, or you're going to be in a position to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. And within a few years, you should be a millionaire. And, and, and so it's the same, it, it's like that with anything to where I don't think either one is, is better and like you get those people that they um if they have the natural ability and, and they're willing to humble themselves and, and learn and put themselves in uncomfortable situations they turn into superstars yep but then you get those people that have zero natural ability but man they want it yeah you know like yep. I, I don't think i had that much natural ability to be real but uh i've worked i've outworked everybody mm-hmm. i remember being in oregon it was a friday night we're all in hotels. Everybody's meeting, meeting up in the in, in one or two rooms of party, trying to hook up with girls. Why well, sit sat in my room and I I read books, and it sounds lame as shit. You know, I'm a 22, 23 year old sitting in my room reading books. But yep. you know what? I got better, and I I outworked those people. And you know, I my I, I always had the hustle, right? I wanted to make money. Mm-hmm. You know, I might not have been the best salesperson, but I wanted to make money. Nobody would out hustle me. Yeah, and I I would put that work in. And I, I read the books in my first two years of my sales career when all my mentors were telling me to read books and they suggest these motivational books. I was like, I don't need that shit, man. Like, I want to make money. Like, I'm motivated. So, like, all I did is read sales books. And then I got good at sales. I wasn't mm-hmm. naturally good at sales. I was a good hustler. Yep. I yep. hustled hard. And I spent two years reading nothing but sales books. And then I got good at sales. And then, you know, I, I, I wanted to be a leader. So I read a bunch of leadership books. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then I realized, well, everybody's not as motivated as I am. So then I started reading motivational books. And so like wh- what Andrew sales is, is today is, is accumulation of what I put the effort to learn. Like I'm not a natural, you know, like I, I, I worked for it. And like mm-hmm. there's people that are naturally as good as I am, but they might not have the success I do because they're not putting, willing to put the work in because they, they have to rely on natural ability. And that's okay. Like if you can be a natural and go out and make a hundred thousand dollars a year and, and just blow your life, if that's what you want to do, do it. But I, I've just had bigger, bigger ambitions. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think that's true. I think a lot of times what ends up happening is, is the naturals get beat. Um, Cause I, I'm the same way. I fell into sales. I didn't just start like thinking I was, I mean, I would sell stuff as a kid and all, but it wasn't like my thing. I thought I was going to be in management and training and life happened. I fell into sales and I didn't know anything. So I'm like, I need to figure it out. So I started reading books, like you said, and just expanding and finding the right guy and then outworking people, just like you said. And I think if you, the unicorns, I call them unicorns are the ones like you and me that will have some natural ability because you kind of got to like it if you're going to stay in sales. I've been in sales 15 sure. years. How long have you been in sales for? I'm at about 15. 13, about yeah. 13 at this point now. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there's a little bit, you're a little bit different if you like sales. It's just how it is. But always growing, they're expanding. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Um, growing, <laughs> expanding, learning new techniques, learning new different things and going through different. I don't know. I like different sales 
stuff to do, like selling different things over the phone. It's nice when someone writes you a check for $250,000 because you just closed them on a deal. You know, I didn't get the two hundred fifty thousand. I got twenty five thousand, but still, it was nice that they wrote that check. I was able to That's make still a big commission, something. man. Yeah, yeah, big. Com- and it's funny once you get to a certain level, you hit that spot where it's not about the money anymore. Now it's about the legacy. Yeah. So that's my next thing. So we talked, we, we touched on it a little bit. Uh, and uh, what are your daily, besides reading, what are your daily habits? What would you suggest for people up and coming, or maybe they've been in the game for a while, but they're not where they want to be? What daily habits or routines do you recommend? Man, you know, so I, I, I love that, man. That's such a great question. And, and there, there's multiple answers to it. The, the one, the daily habit. It just to run you through my day is um, first I start with positive affirmations. Like mm-hmm. the the fair, I, I tell everybody it works with me. Positive affirmations are more important than that first glass of water that you have when you wake up in the morning. And like, you're dehydrated when you weren't wake up, like do some research. Like you're yep. dehydrated. You didn't have anything to drink for eight hours. So like, I, I truly understand the value in that first glass of water. And like, I hate water. I drink a lot of juice, you know, right. but like when I first wake up, I, I drink, you know, purified water that runs through my filter, whatever it's called in mm-hmm. Auckland water. And, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and I, I make sure I drink that first thing in the morning. But before I do that, I, I do positive affirmations. And I, I tell myself, I like myself. I love myself. I'm successful. I'm very successful. I'm a billionaire. I'm a mm-hmm. multi-billionaire. I love my family. My family loves me. I take care of my family. I work hard to take care of my family. I work harder than anyone else. I work harder than the competition. That's why I win. And I, I say it to myself every morning three times over, and it fuels me through the day. Mm-hmm. Because when I feel like, man, you know, like it's, it's eight o'clock at night. I don't feel like taking this phone call. Well, you know what? Like, I'm a multi-billionaire. That's what multi-billionaires do. So I'm going to act like it right now. And my family depends on me. So I'm going to do it. And that's what pushes me day in and day out. And that's why I know that positive affirmations are that important. And then, you know, on top of that, you know, my, my daily activities are, yeah, I, I read every single day. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm huge on self-education. I didn't graduate yep. college, but put me up against anybody with an Ivy League education. They will not hustle me and they won't do better in business than me. It's, it's just what it is. And I, it's because I put that extra effort into education and mm-hmm. I, I, I buy waterproof phones so I can listen to my phone when I'm in the shower. I listen to audio books <laughs> nice. when I'm in the shower and I, I, I read on top of that. And mm-hmm. that's how I get my education in. And no, then, that's good, man. That's good. I want to go back because I know you have more there, but your whole face, physique, everything. When you start doing your affirmation, you change. Like you just like, it was just like, boom. It's like, you just stepped into that. So that <laughs> right there tells me that. Cause like a lot of people say, Oh, I do this. I'd say, I love myself and all. And, and I've had pretty much every guest I talked to mention it, but like, I literally saw the physical change in you when you did that. So I commend you on that. Cause that Thank means you. you're doing it. Cause like you literally just stepped into it. Um, what books would you recommend or what books are you reading right now? Man, so uh, my mentor, Bill Rowland, his mentor is Brian Tracy. I'm sure you know who he was, who he is. Um, yep. Just to show you how close they were, my mentor, Bill, passed away in, in January. And, you know, we did a remembrance Zoom call and Brian Tracy was on the call with Michael oh, Tracy, wow. his son. Gotcha. Um, so, like, Brian Tracy calls Bill, called Bill his second son. Um, so I, I'm biased to Brian Tracy, mm-hmm. you know, and, and to say the least, but, um, I'm a huge believer in, in Brian Tracy psychology of selling and, um, Brian Tracy, the art of closing the deal. I read each one of those once a year, mm-hmm. just cause every year I feel like I'm in a different place in my life to where I learned something from it. Um, on top of that, I'm a real big fan of, of, uh, Robert Greene. Yes. Right. Yes. He's good. I've been trying to get him on my podcast and we're, we're going back and forth a little bit right now. Mm-hmm. Same as plugged, but, um, sorry, I got a phone call on my line, you're good, you're that, good. but, um, but yeah, I'm a huge fan of him. 48 laws of power. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the 33 strategies of war mastery, the mm-hmm. artist seduction. I literally He's great. read 
dude, he is. I, 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 I read his books once a year and I take something away from it different every year. Like when I was coming up, you know, and I'm still coming up in, in, in the sales game, but, um, you know, when I read Mastery, I learned a lot of how to get the most out of my mentors and better myself. Well, now I'm in that spot where I'm mentoring other people. Mm-hmm. So what, now that I'm going through it, like this past few months, you know, because I, I usually read like four or five books at once. So it takes me a few months to make, make it through my, my repetitive reads. But um, now that I'm going through it again, like I'm like, hey, like this is how I can better mentor people around me. People that call me their mentor. And it's still weird for me to call some, for somebody to call me their mentor. Because like yeah. my mentors like sold their, their businesses for like 150 million and stuff. And, <laughs> you know, like I haven't done that to be real with you guys. So like, um, I don't consider myself mentor level sometimes, but then I remember, Hey, like if if somebody hasn't made a hundred thousand dollars and and you've made a hundred thousand dollars, you can mentor them Yep. and and you can help move them along. And so that's why I really like Robert green because same as, uh, as Brian Tracy, I, I take the same stuff away from him based on where I'm at in my life and you know, my business, my career, um, as opposed to where I was a year ago, I can take mm-hmm. something different away. And so like the, I, I think Brian Tracy, psychology of selling and the art of closing, I call those the sales Bible. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the psychology of selling is the Old Testament. The art of closing is the New Testament. <laughs> nice. There you go. There you go. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, you, you got to read your, I, I always suggest those first. And then mm-hmm. you read your, your, your Robert Greene. Yeah, no, and, and I like Robert Greene. Like, I've read Tracy's stuff. It's good. I remember reading when I read The 48 Laws of Power and just the different stories and the different ways he would kind of frame You everything. like history, too. I so do. Like, I am a history yeah. man. So, for me, that was great. Um, Dude, that's how history should be taught in school. Side note, but... Yep, yep. No, yeah, that... True. Yeah, because it gives you that whole background. So, yes, we're definitely yeah. giving a shameless plug. Robert Greene, if you watch this or listen to this podcast... Hey, let's do a three-way podcast. You know, all three of us will just do a round table. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely game for that. Um, so here's a question I like to ask, and it's kind of a little bit of an off question, but I think I might know your answer. If you could go. Hey, man, are, are, can you still see me? My, my computer yes. just went black. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah man, cool, we can cool. totally see you. Um, I can't you totally see do. you for whatever reason. It just went black. No worries, man. Yep, I see you. We're good there. Um, can you hear me still? No, I can hear you just fine. Perfect. Just want to double check. So here's the question. And it's an interesting one. If you could go one year back in time or uh, go back in time or forward in time for one year and just talk to any person you want, where would you go and who would you talk to? Man, uh, I actually love that question. I would, uh, I go back in time to my mentor, Bill Rowland. He, uh, he ran the very first sales company I worked for. It's called 2020 Companies mm-hmm. and he sold it for $150 million. And he, uh, he passed away in January. And yeah, man, I'm I, sorry. That's, that's rough. I'm sure. Yeah. He, he, he was one of my five closest friends. And, and the reason I say that, and I, I know this is sales thing and not to get too sappy, but when he was in the hospital, it didn't seem like a big deal. And he, he was posting pictures on Facebook, this and that. And I was going to call him. But, uh, at this point in time, like I have my solar company, Mm-hmm. He has his solar company. I have partners. He was, he was pumping me for information, you know, and I, I just, he got into solar after I got into solar. So right, I, right. Gotcha, it almost gotcha. was like a, a mentor reversal role to where my mm-hmm. mentor is trying to find out solar stuff, but some stuff he's asking is inside information. Yep. Yep. And I was like, Hey, um, I don't want to call him because we have this, this, and this going on. I want to get it cleared away before I call him because I just don't want to tell him about it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and he passed away that, that next two days later. And, uh, you know, I've always wished I would have made that call because no matter what, when I called him, even if he was pumping me for information, I, I learned something for him. So mm-hmm. um, I, I do regret that. And it's, uh, yeah. it's very disappointing to me. No, no, man. And, and wow. Thank you for sharing that story. Cause that's definitely personal there. That's, that's a hard one. I think it's a good life lesson though. You know, if yeah. there's someone for any reason you're not talking to, you never know the daily hour, reach mm-hmm. out, you know, get past the stuff. Yours wasn't like a bad thing. It was a business thing and you're protecting your business. Totally get that. But 
a lot of people hold grudges way too long. So here's my next question. Well, first let's do this because I don't like doing it at the end. Where can people find you? Because you know, once you get to the end, everyone tries to drop off. So we're going to do yeah, some yeah. more stuff after this. So don't go away. But where can people find you and your stuff? For sure, man. So you can find me. Um, I'm Andrew Sales. It was Destiny. That's my last name. I'm on Facebook, Andrew Sales, S-A-Y-L-E-S. That's S-A-Y-L-E-S. You can find <laughs> me on Facebook, on Instagram. I'm the real Andrew Sales. You can find me on Snapchat, Hustler at E-Q-S-T-L-E-R-E-N-T. -E I have a podcast myself. It's called Sales Tales, S-A-Y-L-E-S, Tales, T-A-L-E-S. Um, Joe's actually got an episode that I'm about to drop very soon. I kind of awesome. fell off on, on dropping shit on the regular because I got a lot of stuff going on, but no excuses. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's where you guys can find me. Awesome. Cool, man. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, definitely check his podcast out like it rate it comment it like you do with mine so let's do some rapid fire just some fun quick questions mountain or beach man mountain i'm a snowboarder yeah yeah i used to be beach now i'm going more mountain my um, six-year-old can snowboard man it's a it's, a, it's fun for me steak or dessert steak baby i'm a closer steaks for closers <laughs> uh money or legacy legacy and i love that because me and my so side side story so me and my best friend we, we both grew up selling drugs together and um now we have offices next to each other i have this office with the view of bush stadium on one side the arch mm -hmm. on the other oh, my best friend's right next to me so we went from you know sharing a dope uh, a dope selling corner to selling offices sharing office he managed my call center that's um awesome. yeah it, it really is what we were talking about today and it's like it's all about the legacy, right? Like I like making money. I'm good at making money, but I don't want my kid to have to worry about money. I right. want him to be able to chase his passions and just money is taken care of. Yeah. No, no. I'm legacy with you all day. I'm with you. Cause and like I said earlier, once you get to a certain level, you can only go on so many trips. You can only buy so many cars. You can only do so many stuff, but the legacy that you can leave for other people, the people you can impact, touch, whatever, you know, you want to do family, churches, life, yeah. whatever that is, that's when it gets to be fun. Because once mm -hmm. you get over the 100K, and that's why I even started this podcast was once I got over 100K, I could finally breathe and start to dream again. Yeah. You know, because before then you're like, oh crap, I got to hustle, got to do this, got to do that. Oh, and I was like, real. no, I can dream. I can, what do I want to do now? Because I'm not worried about that. So, I mean, yeah. that, that actually, I think is going to be a perfect ending for this time. We're going to have to have you come back um, and talk more about door knocking, maybe more about your businesses, some of the other stuff. I love you, doing. man. It was fun. That'd be awesome. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone again for being out here, listening into the 150K podcast where we take your dreams from six figures and beyond. We are now on Spotify, Apple, pretty much anywhere you listen to podcasts. Check mine out. Check out Sales Tales. Leave them a comment. Listen to his stuff. It's great. I appreciate each and every one of you. Share the crap out of this. Tell your friends, family, and all, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Tommy. I appreciate bringing me. Podcast. Yeah, man. It's been perfect.